Hey everyone, this is Derek Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Today's video is going to be on Dodge Grand Caravans as well as their sister, the Chrysler Town & Country. Year models, 2008, 2009, and 2010. I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do to remove the instrument cluster assembly. Now, in order to start getting this trim off, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to access the two Phillips screws that are up in here. You can see the little square cutouts here and here. What you need to do is grab on the inboard edge of each one of them a little small screwdriver and pop it loose. It's got a little plastic hinge type setup. Now all you got to do is get up in here and take your Phillips screw loose. And we'll repeat the same thing on this side. What that's going to do is allow us to get access to getting this top piece off. Now, we do have a trim piece across the front of the dash we need to take loose because once we pop this up, she's got fasteners on the side, but there's some screws at the front, two of them. So we can't get this completely off yet until we take those off. But we can go ahead and get the two Phillips screws off here and here. This holds this trim piece in place. Now we're not going to remove this completely uh, because we'd have to remove the lower console. That's a few more steps. Anything to make it faster and simpler about taking stuff off you don't need is what I'm all about. Um, we just need to pull back once we get the two Phillips screws out here. And she'll give you enough flex to get to everything you need. Um, it's got snaps on the side. Same thing when you go back with it, you just give it a good firm snap in. Otherwise, we're just gonna pull it back enough to get access to the screws we need to. Now, when it comes time, in order to get to the front side of the center piece that went above the radio where the screws are, we need to get this trim piece right here off that goes from the left side of the dash all the way to the right side. And it's a separate piece. It has some fasteners that fasten it down towards right here. And then it's also got some that go straight down. Now they all snap in. All I'm going to be using is my plastic trim stick as always. I'm going to find a uh, little edge for the lip to get up under. And I'm just going to kind of pry back. Kind of work it. And as you go, you're going to hear it pop. That's it releasing as we go down the line here. Alright, so I got all those loosened up. Now to get the ones that went down by the windshield, you just grab a piece, a corner of this trim, and just pull back. And that'll release it from there. And now once I've got that, I can go ahead and move it out of the way. And we'll move on to getting to these screws right here. Now we've got our two Phillips screws. I'm going to be using a real short Phillips screwdriver. Go ahead and back them all the way out. Get one on this side. Get one on this side. And that's for the centerpiece that goes above the radio. Put those Phillips screws out of the way up here. And go ahead and lift up and we can pull it and set it to the side. That's where two Phillips went. Like I said you see your little plastic snaps along the edge, some are metal, some are plastic, and you got the two Phillips that were inside. That little access doors right here. Now that's out of the way. Now with the centerpiece out of the way, we've got two Phillips screws, one here and one here. And we got three that go around the perimeter of the upper dash piece that goes around the cluster. One up here, one here, and one towards the pillar. Now we got to get the key out of the ignition. We're also going to go ahead and take this trim ring off. We use a plastic pipe stick right here, trim stick. Start grabbing it, pull it off, and set that to the side. And one thing we got to do is when we pull this trim piece back, we're trying to access this screw right here. It's only one of the reasons why this, this piece is being pulled back. Like I said, we didn't take this all the way off. We just left it to where we can pull it back enough. We only need enough to get that screw. That screw is part of the dash piece that goes around the cluster. And that's its bottom corner right there where the Phillips screw goes in. We need to back that out. Now, the back side of the shifter handle is where you need to back off this Allen right here. Now, it's going to be a 3 millimeters. what I'm using. I'm just going to back it off with one of these universal tools. Now you want to keep a little pressure down, there's a reason why. Because the button itself is spring-loaded. If you just pick it straight up, the button and the spring's going to fly out. 
So put your hand around the button and kind of pick up at the same time. Because this is what usually happens, the spring can come out. And it's nothing major, you can put it back down in there. It's got a perfect place where it's supposed to go and then you just slide this, the button back in place. When you go to reinstall it, just make sure you push all the way down. Make sure your button works. Hold it down while you be tightening up on that third, that three millimeter Allen right there. Like I said, we'll set that to the side and keep up with it so we don't lose the spring or the button. We need to get access to the side of this trim piece that goes around the cluster, so we need to get this trim panel off. We're gonna use our plastic trim stick. Get up in here, find a corner to start popping loose. You had to use your finger to kind of stay in there and keep it out. She can be in there pretty tight. Just take your time, there you go. Part of it goes up under the seal here, so when you pull it out, just be prepared for that. Now we need to move on to this knee bolster right here on the dash. Now we got a T20 Torx right here we need to back out. You can get you a short T20, that's great. I've got a long one, but I've actually got enough room going in at an angle that I can get it off fine. And then what we'll do is we'll move on to the two T20s that go along the bottom edge here. Another thing we gotta get loose, we gotta get this headlight switch up because there's an electrical connector on the back and we don't need the switch to come off with the trim piece. So we get up under there, plastic trim stick as always, do a little prying on the bottom, and if we need to, we'll get up here and we'll also pry on the top and get it snapped loose. Now on the back side, you got a two stage lock. You need to lift up on the red. Once you lift up on the red, you can squeeze down on the red. And now the headlight switch is out of the way, the electrical connector is no longer holding on to it. Now looking from underneath on this knee bolster, you got your T20 right here and you got your T20 right here. I'll go ahead and back both those out and we'll get ready to get this panel out. All right, so we've got all the T20s out. We can go ahead and start grabbing the corner and start pulling. She has snaps that hold them in place up top. And along the edge here. And we can take this piece, set it to the side. Now what we're going to do is we're still on the driver's side, all the way close to the door. We've got two Phillips screws right here. We need to back out. And then we're going to have one on the other side where I'll show you. At this point we got the knee bolster out of the way. We take the Phillips out on the driver's side. Now this is directly below where the ignition key is. This piece right here is actually the trim piece that the AC control head radio and all are on. So when you're looking at it, this is what you're looking right at the bottom edge. And this piece right here is actually the piece that goes around the cluster. So what we're going to do is work on getting this Phillips screw out. That's our last fastener holding it in place as far as screws. Now what I recommend doing is go ahead and make sure that the steering wheel is tilted all the way down. Uh, all we got is some snaps along the perimeter of this piece of trim here that goes all the way around the cluster and around the bottom two edges. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab the bottom edges, pop them loose, get them freed up. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pull back on this because we've got to have a little clearance to come out through the passenger side. Lift up. At the same time, go straight up towards the windshield. There we go, we've got that off. Now I can start sliding it out through the side. Now we have access to our instrument cluster. Now this instrument cluster has four Phillips screws, one here, one here. We got another one right here. We got another one right here, this bottom corner. Once you get those four out, you should be ready to move. Got the last one out. Now I can lift up. And from the bottom side, I can grab each one of the connectors and start unplugging one at a time. I finally get everything done. Now they could be a little tricky at times. Just kind of grab them. There we go. We got that one. And we got that one. Now the cluster's up. We can sit it to the side, get our new one. Uh, all we do is just opposite of removal. We would plug it in. Get them all in. Nicely fully seated. Make sure you hear the click. Position it correctly. It's got some alignment dowels on the bottom two screws. Line everything up. Out there in. We can go ahead and put our Phillips screws back in. And then everything is just opposite of removal. 
All right, so as you saw, there's a lot of steps as far as trim pieces that have to come off in a certain order. I believe as long as you follow the video step by step, you shouldn't have any problem. Installation is just the opposite of removal. Just remember what trim piece went on first and which one needs to go over it next as far as covering everything up. And you shouldn't have any problems. So if you got any kind of questions or comments, feel free to contact me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. Uh, if you got any kind of thumbs up on YouTube, that would be greatly appreciated. You can also like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and you can check me out on Instagram as well. So, at this point, I appreciate you watching these videos. Always stay tuned for more.